The lost ship of the desert is the subject of legends about various historical maritime vessels having supposedly become stranded and subsequently lost in the deserts of the American Southwest, most commonly in California's Colorado Desert. Since the period following the American Civil War, stories about Spanish treasure galleons buried beneath the desert sands north of the Gulf of California have emerged as popular legends in American folklore. A mountaineer, storm-stained, and brown. From farthest desert touched the town. And, striding through the town held, up. Above his head a jewel D cup. He put two fingers to his lip. He whispered E wild, he stood a tip. And leaned E the while with lifted hand. And said, a ship lies yonder dead. And said, doubloons lie sown in sand. Along yon desert dead and brown. Joaquin Miller 1875, The Ship in the Desert. Roberts Brothers Version. Stories. The Lost Galleon. The earliest tales of a lost Spanish galleon appeared shortly after the Colorado River flood of 1862. Colonel Albert S. Evans reported seeing such a ship in 1863. In the Los Angeles Daily News of August 1870, the ship was described as a half-buried hulk in a drying alkali marsh or saline lake, west of Dos Palmas, California, and 40 miles north of Yuma, Arizona. It could easily be viewed at a distance of several miles from a mesa that lay between Dos Palmas and Palma Seca, California. The stories have given Palma Seca other names, Soda Springs, Indian Springs, and Bitter Springs, as the area was not well mapped in 1870. Expeditions were sent out in search of her, but the ship had apparently vanished into the sand and mud once again. The galleon, according to old-timers, is now under the waters of the modern Salton Sea. There are those who claim the ship is Thomas Cavendish's content, filled with pirate plunder, Others claim that she is the E.Q., a ship of Spanish mutineers. Pearl Ship of Wanda Iturb This legend may refer to the same ship as the Lost Galleon, but its own story has always placed it in a distinct location, closer to the sand hills west of El Centro, California. Descriptions suggest it is closer to the size of one of Christopher Columbus' small caravels. The Pearl ship is rumored to have been seen as recently as the 1970s. The story goes that in 1615, Spanish explorer Juan de Iturb embarked on a pearl harvesting expedition, during which his crew sailed a shallow drafted caravel up the Gulf of California. A high tidal bore carried him across a strait into Lake Cahuilla, a postulated contemporaneous saltwater basin periodically connected to the Gulf which was already in the process of drying up permanently. After exploring the lake for several days, Iturb found himself unable to sail out again, whereupon he beached his craft and made his way back to the nearest Spanish settlement on foot, leaving behind a fortune in black pearls. 16th century records from New Spain indicate that the de la Cadena family had a pearl diving monopoly in Baja California. Iturb's alleged ship has been seen and lost several times, and there are several stories about it having been looted. A mule driver traveling with the de Anza expeditions through Alta California was said to have removed the pearls in 1774. Around 1917, an El Centro farmer named Jacobson was said to have found a very small chest of jewels, which he quietly sold in Los Angeles, and to have used timber from the Pearl ship to build his pig pens. The Viking Ship, or the Serpent-Necked Canoe The Viking stories originated around 1900 from the Mexicans and Indians who live in the Colorado River Delta region near the Laguna Salada Basin. The ship is consistently described as an open boat with round metal shields on its sides in the badlands west of Mexicali, Mexico. Around 1933, Myrtle Botts, a librarian from Julian, California, had an encounter with an old prospector who showed her photos of what she called a Viking ship. 
He gave her and her husband directions to the location but an earthquake prevented the bots from following the prospector's trail to the ship. Julian's Pioneer Museum, which inherited Myrtle Bot's papers, also inherited those directions. The Julian Pioneer Museum is not in possession of any records regarding the Viking ship mentioned in this story. The Ferry Boat or River Schooner This story really grew out of an effort to explain or debunk the lost galleon story. It is thought that an abandoned ferry or steamboat that had broken away during a Colorado River flood and had been left dry in the vast sands of the River Delta is the origin of the rumors. Others claim that it was a schooner that gold seekers wishing to search the more inaccessible portions of the Colorado River had built in Los Angeles and hauled through the desert by a mule or oxen team until the animals perished, leaving the boat mired in soft sand. The ferry boat story changed over time more often than the lost galleon story. One incarnation said that a small ferry, a two-man sweep, was built away from the river in a place a hundred feet or so above sea level, where a source of wood was found, and that a team of six, or more, oxen perished hauling it through the sand near Los Algodones. Evaluation of the Legends from a smattering of first, second, and third-hand accounts, a variety of fictional, especially graphic and cinematic, variations of the lost ship stories have been created. Not surprisingly, the first-hand accounts are extremely rare. Many of the above references fit the lost minds and urban legends molds, where the story passes from ear to ear with all evidence disappearing along the way. Searching for and finding the remains of a lost ship is now rather problematic. The greater part of the Salton Sink has been submerged under the Salton Sea since 1905, and much of the adjacent land is under military control and has even been used for bombing ranges, rendering on-the-ground searches highly hazardous and slash or illegal. Lands adjacent to Laguna Salada in Baja California, and between the Gulf of California and the Salton Sea, regularly receive wind-blown sand from the desiccated delta of the much-diverted Colorado River, generating vast sand dune systems. Aerial searches using ground-penetrating radar might reveal ships' remains, but there has not yet been an agency that undertook this project and revealed its findings. Whether or not any such ships actually existed, the legends persist and remain entertaining to many. Media Renditions of Lost Ship Stories this is a media timeline list of material related to the lost ship in the California desert, it shows how the story has changed in each generation's telling. Note, although most written items are a paragraph or more long, and sometimes lengthy articles, some are only a brief sentence or two in passing of what the author had heard and thought about a ship in the desert story. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.